everybody to this hip hip hooray vinyasa flow class uh, for VSGD. It's going to be quite a nice easy vinyasa, but definitely a bit more energy to embrace those slightly lighter evenings um, and the warm sun that we've been having for the last few days. So we'll be getting mainly into the hips, which connects us to our Sadhisthana chakra and our water element. Um, so going with the flow and easing into transition as we begin finally to look like we're moving from winter uh, towards spring. I know we've got a long way off yet, uh, but I feel like at this stage, we have to take every little positive that's coming our way. Um, so it would be handy if you did have a couple of yoga blocks or a cushion or something um, to hand just for one of the postures later in the sequence. Um, but we're going to begin in a nice, comfortable seat um, and then, to be honest, go straight into it to the first pose as we start to connect to the breath. So bringing the soles of the feet together, we're going to come into our Adhikonasana bound angle pose. So if your hips are feeling really tight today, you can just walk your, um, the heels of your feet further away from your pelvis. If you feel like you want to get nice and juicy in there, just bring them in a little bit closer. And to start off with, maybe just swaying the hips from side to side. You can even close the eyes down. Imagine that we're on a nice boat somewhere, nice still lake, connecting to that jala energy, the water element. And as you're doing this, just bringing your awareness to your breath so that whatever else has gone on in your day, you can just connect here, the present moment and savor being in your body. And again, it's you know, always up to you to take from this class what you feel you most need. So if moving feels good, you can sway. If stillness is what you need, you can find stillness. And if you feel like things are starting to open up slightly, you can even make it a little bit juicier by getting the elbows just inside, the inner thigh, inside the knees, and just putting that little bit of pressure to encourage the inner groin and hips to begin to open a little bit more. Taking nice deep inhalations through the nose and exhaling through the nose or maybe taking a nice big sigh, <sighs> releasing out through the mouth, letting go of any tension you may be carrying. And then from here, we're going to keep the left foot pretty much where it is. You can move it forward a little bit if that's comfortable. And if the knee is really high off the ground, you can prop that up with a bit of support. And then with the left foot, we're just going to see if we can bring it up slightly. So you can start off by just holding on to the right foot and the right knee and just kind of almost like rock a by <laughs> a little bit of a soothing motion to get right into that acetabulum feeling the femoral head in the hip joint there, just gently work its way around, easing into the right hip. And you can stick with this, maybe doing little circles, whatever's feeling good for your body. Or if, uh, if this feels fine, perhaps you can bring the foot up into the crook of the elbow and clasp the hands. And if you have got your um, leg up like this, then just lifting through the chest, elongating the spine and extending out through the crown. So we're not hunching over the leg. We have got that lift. And just, again, nice gentle sway. Keep it flowing. Straight away, getting into these hips. And again, you can stay here. Or if you feel like going a little bit deeper, perhaps even lifting the leg up onto the arms, bringing it a little bit closer in towards the chest. So I definitely feel like I'm needing to get deep into the hips today as well. Um, so whatever level you're at, each one is perfectly fine. See if we can keep this foot nice and bright and active as well. Just easing our way, hopefully getting a nice stretch through the outer hip into the glutes, 
remembering to stay connected to our breath. Take a nice couple of deep breaths wherever you are with this leg. And then when you're ready, just gently placing it back down into your Baddha Konasana. And you can just come into a gentle forward fold just for a couple of breaths. Not trying to crank it, but just letting that right hip settle back down. And we're going to move to the left side. So initially just starting with the foot and the knee, just being nice and easy, maybe doing some circles. Just noticing also if one hip feels a little bit tighter than the other. So for me, my right hip is always tighter because of a previous injury. So just making sure that we're honoring those little quirks in our own bodies and being aware of them. And again, if this feels good, taking it up to that next level in the crook and see if you can really push the inner edge of the foot into the elbow crease here, just to keep that foot activated, lifting through the chest, breathing deeply. Remember you can sigh away whatever you need to let go of at any point. And then again, staying here or perhaps hooking the arm, bringing that thigh up over the forearm, maybe the shoulder area and bringing the foot a little bit closer in towards the chest for that extra little bit of zhuzh into the hip. Completely optional. Work to a stage that suits you. Last couple of breaths here. And then very gently just bringing that foot back down into Baddha Konasana. And again, just relaxing forwards for a moment. Nice, gentle forward folds just to ease you into your practice this evening or whenever you may be doing it, if you're doing it on the recording. And then from here, just bring the feet out in front of you about hip distance, uh, soles of the feet on the ground. We're gonna take the arms behind us and our arms are gonna help us to find that lift through the chest. And you may need to use them just to help you get into this next um, pose. We're just gonna do a seated figure four. So almost like a um, seated version of pigeon. So just bringing the right ankle across the left knee and then using those hands behind you. And I'm just gonna do a nice sway. So this time getting into the outer hip waking up that piriformis and if you're someone who's super tight in this area or you struggle with things like sciatica these kind of postures are going to be so great for your body but you may just need to go a little bit easy and be kind to yourself so rocking and you can begin to make those rocks a little bit bigger and part of our water element is just getting expressive giving our body what it needs and maybe even getting to the point where you're able to touch that knee down using the top foot to give the front of the other hip a little bit of a stretch, rolling back over, putting the foot down, just coming into this kind of super cash beach pose. I mean, you can tell the sun's gone right to my head this week, <laughs> dreaming of warmer climbs already. So just rocking back and forth, working within your range, your hip mobility, and then if that's feeling fine, again, you can just walk the feet a little bit closer to you for a bit more intensity into the stretch. Remembering to keep that top foot flexing back and taking your rocks as big or as small as you need them to be. Last breath here, lift through the chest and then pop that foot down and let's take it to the other side, crossing the left ankle on top of the right knee. Just starting small with the little movements, allowing that outer hip on the left hand side to open up. And then again, just getting a bit more expressive with it if that feels good, rocking it side to side, maybe coming all the way down. Super cash side two. Doing whatever you feel you need to warm those hips up a little bit. 
before we get into our flow. Mm -hmm. Then last deep breath. And again, sorry, you can bring that foot in a little bit closer if you want to go deeper. And then release that foot down and just give them a little bit of relief. You can just let your legs kind of, I guess, have like a bit of a tantrum <laughs> and do what they need to do to find relief. And we're going to come onto the knees. I'm just going to turn this way, coming into a toe squat. So just warming up through the legs a little bit. So see if you can just make sure that even your little pinky toe is tucked under and then bring the hips back down onto the heels. So this is just firing up the feet a little bit because they so often get neglected, but also because we don't just want to focus on the hips. We want to also encourage opening through the collarbones. So I see whilst you're in your toe squat, if you can take the hands behind you in some way, maybe clasping opposite elbows with the hands, or maybe coming into a reverse Anjali Mudra, so reverse prayer. So I'll just show you what that looks like with the hands in prayer up behind the shoulder blades. And then you can encourage that lift of the chest taking a few deep breaths, and I know the feet are gonna be feeling it soon. Just bear with it a fraction longer for me, if you can. <sighs> deep breaths. <laughs> so good to stretch those plantar ligaments in the feet, get into the toes a little bit. Keeping that lift through the chest and encourage a broadening across the collarbones. Last couple of deep breaths here. And then come down, relax the toes and just sink back down onto them. That should already feel pretty incredible. And then to just get into the side body a little bit before we really start to flow, take a nice deep inhale, lift the arms up. As you exhale, right hand comes to outer left thigh. This hand can be behind you. Just Try and keep that lift and that elongation into your twist, looking out over the left shoulder. Couple of breaths here. And then inhale back up to center and exhale, taking it down to the other side. Looking out over the right shoulder. Couple of breaths. And then with an inhale, just gently coming back, come into tabletop and from tabletop, we're going to get right into it tonight, going up into downward facing dog. So take a nice big inhale, tuck those toes as you exhale, knees up, hips back, reaching through the hands. And when you arrive in your dog, it's always nice, especially with the first dog of the day to take it for a little walk, alternating bending one knee, and then the other. Remembering that knees can be bent as much as they need to be in order for the spine to be nice and lengthened. And then see if you can just come to a bit of stillness. And in this variation, we're just gonna take the feet quite wide apart, maybe even as wide as our yoga mats coming into our wide-legged downward facing dog. And when we get here, again, knees can be bent if they need to be. If not, relax the heels down towards the mat. I want you to imagine that you're pulling your mat apart with your feet. So you're really trying to sort of abduct from the legs and you should hopefully feel the outer legs and outer hips switch on with this intention bringing awareness up through the legs, the side body, outer hip, and then release that intention. And again, just bend the knees, walking your wide-legged dog a couple of times. And then from here, walk the left hand a little bit closer to center, reach underneath with your right, coming into your twisting dog. See if you can grab 
your outer shin, maybe coming down to your ankle, bend the knee if you need to, and then just use that arm to help you to look out through, coming into the twist. A <sighs> couple of breaths here. <sighs> and then releasing back to neutral, and this time just walking the right hand a little bit closer to center to take it to the other side. So hopefully you should be easing into this twist, using the arm to get the rotation through the thoracic spine, but also feeling it in the outer hip. And then from here, just to get the body moving, we're gonna go through a few downward facing dog to child pose waves. So come back to your normal downward facing dog with your feet about hip distance apart. Take a nice deep inhale, exhale, sigh out through the mouth. And this time as you inhale, come forward, almost as if you're coming into plank, but as you exhale, knees come down, sink those hips back over the heels, reach the arms forward. And if you need to, you can stay here in child's pose for a few breaths. If you want to keep it moving, we're gonna inhale, come back up to tabletop, exhale, take it back to downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale and down dog. And then inhale, bringing it forward. Exhale, taking it back. Child's pose, extended child's pose, Utita Balasana. Inhale, coming back to tabletop. And exhale, downward facing dog. One more time, full round of breath. Inhale, exhale in your down dog. And then inhale, come forward. Exhale, knees wide. Sink it back, Utita Balasana. And everybody just rests there for a breath or two before we get into our flow. And I don't know about you, but that's warmed me up a little bit. So hopefully we should be ready to get a little bit more into the vinyasa. So take a nice deep breath in your child's pose. Remember, you can stay there if you want to. If you're coming with me, coming back up into your downward facing dog, we're gonna inhale, reach the um, right leg up. And as you exhale, step it forwards, turn the back foot 45 degrees, coming on up into your Virabhadrasana one, warrior one. So bending into that front knee, we want the hip points facing forwards, stretching through that outer hip. And then from here, inhale, reach the arms up. And we'll just take a couple of breaths here for the first round. So if the shoulders are super tight, remember you can turn the palms to face behind you, which will help the shoulders to come down a little bit. Using the inhales to lift and the exhales to soften deeper into the pose. Last couple of breaths here on side one. And we're gonna inhale, reach up. Exhale, come down, plant the palms and step the foot back into your plank. Inhale in plank and you can either put the knees down or as you exhale, come on down through chaturanga and then inhale, coming up into your bhujangasana, cobra pose or maybe up with facing dog if that's what you prefer. Exhale, coming down, taking it back into your downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, stepping it forwards. Side two, catching your fear of the dress and a one. Inhaling those arms up, or if that's too much, you can keep the hands on the hips, but we still want the lift with the inhales and the easing 
with the exhales and just see if we can guide those pelvic points round to face the front. So it's quite a subtle but strong hip opener, Rio Bhadrasana 1, and very energizing as well. Wherever you are, take a nice deep inhale as you exhale, frame the foot again, step back, find your plank, inhale here, and then exhale, knees down or all the way down through Chaturanga. Inhale, coming into Cobra and exhale, taking it back into Downward Facing Dog. Remembering you can rest in Child's Pose at any time. Otherwise, let's keep it moving. Inhale, right foot up and back. Exhale, step it forward. Initial inhale, catching Virabhadrasana one, foot at 45 degrees. This time as you exhale, opening that foot up to 90 degrees at the back, coming in to your Virabhadrasana two, warrior two pose. We'll take a breath or two here this round. So as we're inhaling, we're lifting, we're reaching, elongating, and as we're exhaling, see if we can go a little bit deeper into that front knee. Next inhale, we're gonna drop the arm down over the thigh, reach out, coming into our extended side angle, and with your exhale, see so if you can get deeper into that front knee, opening up the hip. And just see if you can use this forearm to roll that inner groin back, keeping the knee stacked over the ankle, you should feel that groin start to open up. Couple of breaths here, inhaling, reach top arm nice and bright. Exhale, framing that foot, stepping back to your plank. Inhale in plank and exhale down through Chaturanga. Inhale, Cobra or Upward Facing Dog. Exhale, coming back, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, left foot up and back. Exhale, step it forwards. First inhale, Virabhadrasana one, foot at 45. As you exhale, back foot at 90 degrees, coming in to your Virabhadrasana, warrior two. And I'm gonna stay like this so you can see it from a different angle. Inhaling, reaching through the arms, relaxing the shoulders. As you're exhaling, going deeper into that front leg. And then on the next inhale, drop the forearm to the thigh, reach across into your extended side angle. And remember, we're using this forearm to roll the inner thigh out, getting into the inner groin and hips. Last inhale here, reach through the arm, strong supporting leg. Exhale, framing the foot, stepping back plank and you can go straight back to downward facing dog or as you exhale coming down through chaturanga inhaling cobra or upward facing dog exhaling taking it back downward facing dog and just take a moment here walk it out or take a very brief child's pose and then let's continue to flow like a little waterfall. Inhale, right foot up and back. Exhale, step it forward. Inhale, come up, warrior one. Exhale, take it out, warrior two. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, take it in to your extended side angle. I'm gonna stay here for another couple of breaths. This time, if you're able to, you can reach under, reach the top arm behind and see if you can take the bind. See if you can lift and encourage this top shoulder back. Staying here, hopefully really feeling this in that right hip. Strong, straight leg, getting into that outer edge of the back foot. Last couple of breaths here. And then this time, as you release, we're going to put the hands either side of the front foot, step the back foot in, 
about a good step or two and straighten this front leg coming into your pyramid pose. Once you've got set up and you can take your time, make sure you've got your balance, maybe the fingertips are on the floor, have them on blocks or maybe even keeping them on your hips. We're using our exhalations to reach out through the crown and our exhalations to soften down over that front leg. And just see if you can draw that front hip back. So it's sort of squaring the hips and you should feel the hip fire up for you on that front side. Last couple of breaths here. Take a nice deep inhale. As you exhale, bend into that front knee, frame the foot, step it back, either straight to down dog or inhale plank. Exhale, coming down, moving through the vinyasa. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, taking it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg up and back. Exhale, step it forwards. Back foot set up for warrior one. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, open the back foot out 90 degrees. Inhaling your warrior two. Exhale, forearm to knee or uh, across the thigh. And inhale, reach into your extended side angle. Either staying here or seeing if you can reach under, reach that arm and take the bind behind the leg. Using the breath to find some ease, getting into that front hip. Last inhalation, and this time as you exhale, release the hands down. We're gonna step that back foot forward once again to find our pyramid pose on side two. So if it helps you, you can actually put your thumb in your hip crease, and you see how my hips forward here. If you guide that hip back, you're gonna get much more into the outer hip as well as feeling a really nice stretch through the hamstrings and the calves. Again, using the breath here, inhaling to lengthen through the crown, exhaling to release, taking care not to lock out that front knee. Gentle micro bend. Couple of breaths here. And then take a nice deep inhale. As you exhale, bend into that front knee, frame the foot, step back, plank or straight to a downward facing dog. Inhale in your plank. Exhale, coming down through Chaturanga. Inhale, Cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, coming back into your downward facing dog. And you can either take extended child's pose or if you're wanting to stay with a bit more movement. I love taking my dog for a walk. Always feels amazing through the back of the legs. It can be a nice way to find rest, but kind of stay active as well. Taking a few deep breaths here, letting the heart rate settle. And then inhale, take the right leg up and back once more. This time as you exhale, we're gonna step that front leg through with our right ankle coming towards the left wrist, which will bring us into our Ekapada Rajakapatasana, our pigeon prep pose. We're gonna do pigeon a little bit differently today. So I just want you to take a moment to set up. So remembering to check back in with this back leg, point through the toes, make sure that's nice and straight and adjust this front foot depending on whether it's too intense or if you have a little bit more to give. So if you need to ease off, you can walk the heel closer into the hip. If you can take it a little bit deeper, you can 
try and make this front shin sort of parallel to the short edge of your mat. But just make sure that that outer hip isn't, you know, a mile off the ground. If it is, you can support it with a block or a cushion. But take a moment here, just up on fingertips, lifting through the chest. And this is where we really start to get into that outer hip and glutes. So we warmed it up a little bit with our seated variation at the start. And then from here, if you can, and you can stay here if that feels okay, but walk your fingertips. So you're bringing your torso in between the front foot and the back leg. And then just see, you might even want to sort of push your left hand into the sole of your right foot and you can come down with the right hand on the forearm for support and we're going to use that leverage to lift the chest and look up towards the ceiling coming into a little bit of a twist in our pigeon so this is our open twist couple of breaths here lifting up through the chest pushing the sole of the foot and the palm of the hand together to help get that traction. Last inhale here, and then exhale, come round back over into sort of a neutral pigeon, if you like. And then options, take it to the other side by hooking the left hand round the right knee. And again, this time you wanna come up on your right fingertips to help you come into the twist in the other direction using the breath to help you find lift or soften into the pose couple more deep breaths here nice big inhale lift through the chest exhale come on back round into neutral pigeon come back up with the help of the hands and ease that foot back into tabletop Take a nice big inhale here and then exhale back up into your down dog just long enough to walk it out, ease off that right hip. And then from here, inhale, left leg up and back. Ooh, nearly went a flying pigeon there. Exhale, step it forward, setting up your Ekapada Raja Kapitasana on side two. Strong straight back leg, encouraging downward ease with that left hip and just play around with the front of the left shin to find that spot for you that feels like you're getting a good stretch without overdoing it lifting through the chest <sighs> relaxing into your pigeon prep pose and option to stay here if this feels really good for you or we're gonna do the same twist that we did on the other side. So come on down to your forearms. We're gonna use the left forearm for support this time. Push the right palm into the sole of the left foot and come into the open twist on side two. Still elongating and reaching out through the crown. Exhale, see if we can encourage our thoracic spine to open up a little bit more. Last couple of breaths here. And then inhale, coming back, pausing just in your neutral pigeon for a breath or two. And then taking it to the other side by cupping the left knee with the right hand. And for this one, we wanna be up on our fingertips. And you can even walk that hand a little bit closer in towards the body using that support to help you to come into the twist on side two. Again, just tuning into the breath. Seeing if you can soften, it may feel like we've got a lot going on in our body at the moment, which we have, but just see if you can bring a little bit of ease with the breath. And then from here, last deep big inhale, exhale, coming back to your neutral pigeon. Again, just pausing here just briefly. And then coming back up. And this time, instead of stepping back to down dog, we're gonna put our weight into that outer hip, 
and bring that back foot round to join its friend. So this next uh, posture is our Sutta Virasana, our reclined hero's pose. It's gonna be really good for helping us to open up the front body, getting into the quads, psoas, lower abdomen. But it's not necessarily a comfortable pose. And to be honest, it's one that I still struggle to relax in. So that's why I'm practicing it with you because I need it as much as you guys probably do. <laughs> Uh, it's for this one that you might need your blocks or a pillow or a cushion. So I'm just going to face you so you can see what we're doing with the legs. So we're going to come initially into our Virasana, our hero's pose. So you can see here that I've got my feet either side. My knees are together and they're going to stay together. And I've relaxed my sit bones down onto my mat in between my heels. Now this can already feel pretty intense, particularly in the tops of the feet and the ankles, or just in the lower back or in the legs. So if that's a real struggle for you, grab your block or your cushion, pop it under your seat and give yourself a little bit of height, keeping those knees together. And this is gonna be probably where you stay for the next few moments, just reconnecting to the breath and letting these joints and muscles open up in a very, very gentle way. And if you um, feel good, you can give it a go coming back with us, but please just go nice and steady. Don't feel any pain. If anything feels super uncomfortable, ease back off. But if you're okay sat down on the floor, then we're gonna see if we can take it back a little bit. And again, this might be where you just want your props or a little bit of support. So I'm just gonna come to the end of my mat, so we're going to be um, edging back. So find yourself, first of all, in your seated Varasana. Please just remember to keep those knees drawing together. That's going to help you to protect your knees. We don't want the knees to be lifting off. So if you decide that you're going to come back and your knees start to lift, stay here. So it may be that you just bring your hands behind you, lifting through the chest, and this is your variation of Sutta Virasana today. And that is perfectly great. And some days, this is as far as I can take it. If you want to take it a little bit deeper, and bear in mind, like if you're super comfortable in this pose and you can go lying straight back, please feel free to do that. Again, I'm just here as a guide. If you want a little bit of support, I kind of set myself up with my blocks here. So I can come back on one block that's going to support my back. And then I have the block on its tallest height that's going to support my head. And if you don't have yoga blocks, you can use a nice big uh, chunky vet textbook or cushions to prop yourself up. And just notice here that by propping, I'm really allowing my collarbones and chest open up as well as getting in to the front of the body and my ankles. And we're just going to take a few breaths here. And I know that this can be super intense. So just stick with it for a few breaths. And after this, we're going to go straight into Shavasana. So that's something to look forward to. <laughs> Tuning back into the breath here. Inhaling deeply through the nose, bringing that breath down the front body to where it's most needed. Exhaling, seeing if you can soften down wherever you are. And you can stay here for a little bit longer if this is feeling really good or feeling like what your body needs. But otherwise, we're gonna to start to very carefully make our way back up. So please use the support of your hands to lift yourself up very, very slowly, coming back up, bringing the hands forward, and then just before we do go into Shavasana, what always feels amazing for me, I'm just going to move these out of the way, after being in Sukta Virasana, is to just come back into tabletop, tuck my toes, and just gently hover the knees above the mat. That just helps, because I feel this a lot in my ankles. I don't know about you guys, but I guess because we work on our feet all day, or in cars, if you're doing large animal or equine, our feet spend so much time in that sort of um, dorsiflexion mode 
that when we come into a pose like Sutta Virasana, where we're really lengthening through the tops of the feet, uh, it can be a bit challenging. So just take it nice and steady. And then when you've had enough of that, you can also just tap the top of the feet on the mat. Bring that feeling back into those toes. And then when you're ready, make your way down onto your back. You can grab a nice cozy blanket or some socks. We're just gonna stay here briefly together, but if you have a little bit more time, I'd really encourage staying for another five minutes or so. Allow the legs to just lengthen and be heavy, hip distance apart. Snuggle those shoulder blades under, palms facing up. Gentle tuck of the chin, as I always say, to give that bit of length through the back of the neck. Inhaling deeply, exhaling, releasing into your Shavasana, which has been really well earned tonight. The beautiful thing about the water element is that it's so transitional. So we can go as we flowed through this class, easing into it, and then opening the floodgates as we put a little bit more energetic through the vinyasas. And then just as you would start to turn down a tap, a faucet on a tap, slowing that flow to a trickle, to stillness. And please do stay longer if you can. But if you're finishing this class with me, we'll just slowly start to bring a little bit of movement back into the body. Maybe even taking a nice full body stretch and then gently coming over onto a side of your choice maybe if you're doing this on the recording in daytime you can come onto your right hand side if you're winding down for bed left hand side is always nice whichever side you're on really doesn't matter. Just taking these last few breaths and being really proud of yourself for carving out this little bit of time to get into your body, into your hips, and go with the flow. When you're ready, using those arms for support, coming back into a nice comfortable seat. Hopefully those hips feel like they're making delicious contact with the ground after all of that work. Bringing the palms to heart center. Take a nice deep inhale. Exhale, sigh out. Release what you need to. Thank you so much for practicing with me. I hope you enjoyed our hip hip hooray class for BSGD. Namaste.